Mr. Grossi, before I let you go, we have to ask about Iran. The messaging from Tehran, from the foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdolian, is very optimistic at the moment. Yesterday, you said in a press conference you had no plans to go to Iran. But now you are going to Tehran on Saturday. What has changed in the last 24 hours? Well, the, uh, the negotiations with, with Iran um, uh, are ongoing, were ongoing, and we believe, Iran and myself, that we have come to a point where it could be worthwhile uh, give it a, a very decisive uh, try and see if we can agree on something. And for those who may not be familiar, this something, as far as I am concerned, is to see how we can clarify a number of issues that have been hanging on for, 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 for a long time, um, uh, because the IAEA found traces of enriched uranium and uh, other nuclear material and has information about um, installations and places that had not been, had never been declared uh, to the IAEA. So this combined with the ongoing negotiations, which, as you know, are taking place also in parallel here in Vienna uh, on uh, the re revival or possible revival of the agreements, the 2015 agreements uh, in the jargon, the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, so program of action. Uh, this compound makes it for a complex issue that has to move in parallel in the same direction and in the same way, because people cannot foresee that there could be a return, a return to the JCPOA if there are unresolved issues with the IAEA. This is why it is so important that we find a way forward. It doesn't mean that I'm going to solve this by traveling to Tehran over the weekend. Uh, it means that we are going to try to see eye to eye understand each other and see what needs to be done so that these things are clarified. And at the same time, this paves the way for the other agreement maybe to be uh, revived.